Joy News Prime. Wherever in the world you're watching, this is Joy News Prime, Ghana's most comprehensive news bulletin. My name is Francisca Kakra Forsen. Coming up, Accra Human Rights Court throws out suits by suspended national chairman of the New Patriotic Party seeking to stop the party's extraordinary delegates congress in Sunyani on Saturday from discussing matters relating to his suspension. We'll be there live in the Bonoafo regional capital for an update on preparations so far. Also, pressure group Occupy Ghana, frustrated by the power minister's reluctance to provide further and better particulars on controversial Ameri Energy Agreement. Chief of Staff calls for probe into contracts awarded for the rebranding of public commuter buses. And in business tonight, rating agency Fitch warns Ghana may have to pay high interest rates on its planned 2016 euro bond. Environment Minister threatens to withdraw production licenses of plastic manufacturers who flout the directive to produce only biodegradable plastics. The business news comes up in 30 minutes, but then entertainment, sports and joint news interactive will follow in the second hour. This bulletin is also available across Europe on the ABN television on the Sky platform as well as Freeview Connect. Stay tuned. Thanks for staying with us. A high court in Accra has thrown out an application filed by the suspended chairman of the New Patriotic Party, Paul Afoko. He filed a writ seeking a court ruling to prohibit the MPP from discussing his position at the party's extraordinary delegates congress in Sunyane this weekend. Kwachi Afrenyama was in court for Joy News. Events in court took an interesting twist because although this was supposed to be an ex parte motion by lawyers for Mr. Paul Afoko, the legal representatives of the new patriotic party got wind of the suit and made an appearance in court. They told the court, presided over by Justice Anthony Eboa, that the December 19 conference has absolutely nothing to do with the removal of Mr. Paul Afoko. His lawyers challenged this claim, arguing that they had intercepted some text messages to that effect. But in his ruling, the presiding judge argued that his Mr. Paul Afoko's lawyers had failed to convince the court that the conference has something to do with his removal. Again, the judge ruled that Mr. Paul Afoko's lawyers had failed to prove that if indeed he's removed from office by the MPP, it will cause him irreparable damage. Again, the court mentioned that organizing events of this nature takes a lot of money, a lot of investment, and so against the backdrop of Mr. Paul Afoko's lawyers failing to prove beyond reasonable doubt that it would cause him irreparable damage, he could not grant the injunction. An excited Deputy General Secretary of the MPP, Nano Bribwahin, says this is certainly great news. It's a good news for the party. You know, um, when you are going for an extraordinary annual conference of this nature and you have individuals trying to scuttle um, what is going to be done in Sunyan is quite unacceptable. Fortunately for us, the court has dismissed the application. The court has thrown out the application. So it's a very good news for us. And, and you were saying that you thought that this was certainly just to embarrass the party. Exactly so, looking at trend of affairs. Because honestly speaking, if you look at even the agenda, there is no way we are going to remove Mr. Paul Awintemi Afoko. It's never captured in the agenda. So what was the basis of bringing this application? But his lawyers also argue that if really you do not have any such agenda, why were you so <laughs> determined well, well, to, to, see, to push um, this out? I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a lawyer. My colleague lawyer has made his day in court. I don't think it will be good for me ethically and professionally to comment about his submission. But the bottom line is that the application has been thrown out. So certainly there is nothing like that going to come up tomorrow? Oh, well, as far as I'm concerned, I don't think so. You don't think so or it won't happen? No, it, it's not going to take place. It's not going to happen. If you look at the MPP constitution, before you can embark upon the remover, it's not a simple thing at all. So for me, I think that it was much ado about nothing. 
And we had news uh, about 30 minutes ago that uh, the chiefs in the, the traditional council in the Brown Half region, because of the issue that broke out between the regional chairman and, and them, they were in a crunch meeting trying to stop this. Well, we are in court. Does, we that, are disturb in Does that disturb you? I, I, I don't think so. The party would not, they cannot, they cannot scuttle you. No, it's your... not a question of they cannot. I think that we should allow our colleagues in Sunyane to take up the matter and go into it. Why is that disturbing news for you? Personally or as a party? As a party. Oh, as a party, once the, there is this idea that they've met, at least honestly speaking, it must be a very unpleasant news. But I think we will cross the bridge. The substantive matter concerning Mr. Foucault's indefinite suspension by the MPP is expected to be heard on January 20. For Joy News, my name is Kwache Afrenyama. So the new Patriotic Party's Extraordinary Delegates Congress is coming off in Sunyane in the Brongahafu region this weekend. Among other things, the party will use the occasion to commission its campaign team for the 2016 general elections. Correspondent Precia Semivo joins us on the telephone uh, to discuss uh, the ahead of the Congress. Precious, good evening to you. First, what can you tell us about preparations for the Congress? Well, Francesca, uh, as at now, uh, preparations uh, is almost uh, done with uh, with a session of uh, some uh, few uh, things that uh, organizers will have to, uh, you know, put in place. Uh, after the time I left the coronation part of the uh, platform on which uh, the various speakers uh, will be uh, standing and then it was almost done with, with a session of uh, the branding uh, or the decoration of, of the stands. Uh, so at the coronation part, everything uh, is set and uh, guests are still arriving. Uh, talk about uh, sitting MPs or uh, candidates that will be representing constituencies during the general elections and other uh, party big wigs are all uh, trickling to the, uh, you know, the original capital gradually, and uh, they should be getting themselves ready for the book launch, which will be starting uh, later this evening. Tell us the mood ahead of the Congress. Well, uh, mood uh, is, is all about uh, expectations and, and excitement uh, from from party faithfuls. Uh, this afternoon, uh, when uh, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia. Uh, came to town uh, as he visited the uh, Sunyani, you know, uh, mosque uh, to to worship uh, with them. It was uh, full of excitement, and uh, they are expecting uh, bigger things to happen tomorrow with the arrival of uh, Nana Adudanko Kufa, the flag bearer, uh, who before arriving to Sunyani this evening uh, was also touring some uh, towns and and, and uh, in the Bonga Hafu region from Achirinswa to Shidiem to Kenya number one, and then Kenya number two. They, uh, the mood is full of expectations, and uh, they cannot uh, be disappointed tomorrow. Precious, earlier we had reports of some rift between the party and the Sunyani Traditional Council. Can you tell us about that? Yes, uh, Francesca. It, you know, we uh, woke up this morning to the news that uh, the Traditional Council is uh, having you know, a crunch meeting ostensibly to... Uh, prevent the new patriotic party from having their uh, extraordinary congress uh, here in uh, Sunyane. But uh, after my checks uh, first with the uh, regional secretary of the party, Alfred Ofori Anye, uh, he said uh, before you know 9:30 10 a.m. he had sent a letter with uh, some bottle of snaps to the traditional council, officially uh, informing them of the program as customs demand and also alerting them that. Nana Kufuwa Dudangpa would, would, would be visiting the traditional council, uh, you know, to pay visit tomorrow at 9 uh, a.m. But uh, later in the course of the day, we heard the country in uh, Nana Bokutia saying that uh, he is not aware of uh, any such thing. But Francisca, I can confirm that this meeting that was held today, uh, I'm told it is uh, a weekly uh, meeting uh, of the traditional council. So it was not uh, really a meeting. Uh, targeted at the new patriotic party uh, in the Sunyani uh, for, for their Congress here in Sunyani. 
All right, thank you. That's uh, Precious Semerville from the Bono Ahafo capital, Sunyani, uh, giving us details of uh, what's happening ahead of the NPP's Extraordinary Delegates Congress. We'll stay with this topic a little while longer because Malik Dabu, uh, Abbas Dabu of our political uh, desk, joins me now in the studio for a quick you know, preview of the NPP's Congress in Sunyani. Good evening and thanks for joining us, Malik. How good are you evening, doing? Good I'm good. You okay. look good. Thank you. Now, tell us why this Congress? Why now? Well, uh, the reason possibly uh, primarily is to outdoor the party's uh, campaign team going into 2016. We know that yesterday a list came out, and we know that Mark Maino, a former chairman of the party, is going to lead the party's campaign. We know that a respected former general secretary of the party, Dan Boche, who is okay. MP for Okere, is also in there. It's the party recognizes that this is a crunch election for it. It's, it lost 2008, it lost 2012, it's going into 2016. This is the last chance that the flag bearer has. Uh, he has a long ambition to be president. This is the last time he has, he has a chance to, to take another shot at this. What they want to do here is outdoor this team because the delegates are coming from across the country. They are gathering everybody. What they will do is put before them. These are the people who are going to lead our campaign so that you know them. When they come, you would have met them in Sunyani, you would have interacted with them, you would have listened to them, what, what their vision is and all of that. Remember also that the party has serious internal challenges. What it is seeking to do is to bring all of these people together, try and dust themselves up, try and encourage and motivate themselves that, look, all is not lost, regardless of all the internal challenges that we have, we can still prosecute a campaign Very and possibly win you elections. You talk about in serious internal issues. That brings the name of the suspended chairman, Paul Afuku. He His case in court today was thrown out. He went to court to prevent the party from having any conversation about his position or his former Absolutely. position. Now, what do you make of that? Well, simply what the court said was, one of his arguments was that if the court were... If the court didn't grant his application for injunction and the, the delegates congress took a decision and removed him he, he would have suffered irreparable loss the court disagreed and said even if he were to be removed by the congress of course the lawyers for the party who were in court argued that that was not on the agenda at all but even if he were to be removed he would not suffer any irrepar irreparable damage because he will have a remedy in court all because we do know that he is in court currently challenging his suspension by the party's national executive committee which endorsed a recommendation by the disciplinary committee he's in court challenging that suspension the court's view as taken by today was even if he were to be removed his argument that he will suffer an irreparable loss is not supported by law because if he were to be removed he would still be able to go to court challenge his removal and seek a remedy to that extent the court threw out the application i think it's a minor blow for him he has a substantive case which is in court which is he's challenging the legality and the constitutionality of the party's decision to suspend him that is still in court but for the party, it they will look at this as an encouragement because if Paula Foco has been arguing that there's some unconstitutionality going on and he's gone to court, remember that one of Pontichuku went to court seeking to stop his suspension, that case was also thrown out. They're going to look at those two cases and say, these are small, small victories, but put them together. It means the party is united and the party is taking the right steps. That's how they will try and encourage so themselves. So the court says that whatever the outcome regarding his position, there will be no irreparable loss. How about what the party is saying, and indeed we just heard uh, Nano Bibwahin say that Paul Afoko will not come up tomorrow at the Delegates Congress. Should we take that? Absolutely, because if you look at the party's constitution, Article 10 of the 90, uh, the, the, what do you call it, the MPP's constitution, spells out an elaborate processes of removing a person, a national officer who, who is in office. If you want to remove a national officer, you first of all have to collect some sign signatures from party members at the grassroots level. When you collect these signatures, you have to notify the person against whom a petition has been brought. Mr. Foko has not been notified that he wants to be removed. But the party's constitution says if you want to remove a national officer, you have to go down to the grassroots level of the party, collect signatures, and stating why you want to remove this person. The person must be told a week before the extraordinary delegates conference will be called. The person must be aware. The person must be given an opportunity to defend himself. At that 
extra, uh, extraordinary delegates conference, about 40% of the persons who voted, about the 5,000 delegates who congregated in Tamale and voted Mr. Foucault and the rest, have to congregate again. 40% of that have to take a decision and say, we don't want Mr. Foucault. That has not happened. Though. There's no way, there's no way that they would have gone to Sunyani and would have taken a decision on him. Very well. Malik, you're staying with us. In a bit, we're going to talk about how the MPP will come out of all of this. But as we speak, a lot is happening and a group calling itself the patriotic future of the NPP is accusing the leadership of the party of busing people believed to be non-delegates to the Congress in Sunyane. National coordinator of the group, which is affiliated to the suspended chairman, Paul Afoko, says the decision to bus unaccredited delegates to the Congress forms part of a ploy to force certain decisions on the majority of party members. Charles McCarthy is asking members to resist any such decisions. We have started educating them. You know, this is the heart of the MPP. You cannot do MPP without Ashanti region. That's why we have moved to the capital of Ashanti to tell them that, look, when you go, go and stand by the ideals of the party. What Dumbo, Dumbo, Buzia left behind, go and stand by it. Don't forget, Buzia said, true democracy is when one man decides and still have his liberty to move freely. If this were the people who formulated our part, the ideologies for us, then nobody should be intimidated. People are quiet today in a new patriotic party because of some future political appointment. But if there is no power, you can never be appointed a minister or a deputy minister. There must be power first. If they had followed due process and suspended Paul Afoku, Samitra, I wouldn't have business coming. I wouldn't have business speaking. I wouldn't have business making enemies for myself. Because we have defended this tradition even though we have not. I am surprised that those who have made it out of this tradition are the ones killing it when they are waiting to be called upon by their Lord. Do you think they are killing the party? They are killing the party. Look at them. They no longer speak. Professor Makokwe and his cabal situated them. The CPP people who came to tell us, the Freddie Blaze. They are killing the party. MPP is no longer a party. MPP no longer debate issues. MPP is now fighting. Every day you hear MPP there is fight. This is not a lit party. This is not a lit party. We boast that we have the men, men of integrity, men of some high intellectual standard. If you are an academician, you don't fight. So Malik is in the studio. Malik, you, you're already smiling when he started mentioning names of people he claims are CPP people, uh, making the party no longer attractive. What was going on in your head? Well, I, I mean, it's it's unfortunately it's an argument the MPP, some members of the MPP have consistently made, and sometimes it's funny and it's interesting. A lot of the people in NDC today are CPP. Because we know that the, load, the late President Mills was CPP before he joined the NDC. So there's nowhere anywhere in the world that a political party is a static institution where it's only a certain so, group of people and they take mon monopoly over the party. At every point in time, you will have people cross carpet, you will have people join your party. I, I think he's not making a very solid so that's argument. Moot. So they shouldn't be taking it's, 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 it's a moot argument. The timing? And, well, I mean, I anybody who didn't expect this would have been naive because if you look at what has happened since Mr. Foucault was suspended, the busing of people to Accra to stage a demonstration, all of those actions at the party head of office, the going to court, I think that Mr. Foucault has every right. If he feels that his suspension was unlawful, he has every right to challenge it. Um, whether these kinds of actions, the calling of press conferences and all of those things are in the interest of his own political future is another question. I think he's in court. He should leave it at that. If he is talking about a majority of the people, he's saying that the delegates that are being passed there are going to take a decision for the majority of the people. How is he able to determine that a majority of the people are sitting somewhere on whose behalf some strangers are going to take a decision? How did he come to that determination? So you're already punching holes into the claim being made by this no, gentleman. No, because but the party knows itself. The people know themselves. The people who are being taken from all the regional and constituency levels and polling stations levels, they don't know themselves. They don't know who the delegates are. Somebody's going to 
collect some so strangers and send them to Sunyani. And in any case, what decision are they going to take that anybody feels threatened that this decision is going to undermine their own interests? So this should be ignored clearly. Malik, let's, let's look at the, the, the party expectations. Should we expect NPP to come out of um, tomorrow's Congress looking at all that has happened uh, prior to, to it? Should they come out stronger or weaker? It won't happen. It, they won't come out stronger because Mr. Foko and his people, or those who believe in Mr. Foko, aren't going to stop talking. They'll continue to hold press conferences such as you just played. And so the party will try to put its house together at Congress, but it will still come out limping because some members of the party are determined to ensure that their own agenda is what is obtained and they will continue to hold press conference they will continue to engage in protest that is what is, we are going to see okay. going into next year's election all right all right we'll leave it here all about the npp but thank you uh, malik dabu who thank is you. editor at myjoyonline.com you're watching joy news prime with me francisca kakra force we'll take our first break we'll be back with more stories Hello again, you're watching Joy News Prime. Now, a few weeks ago, presidential staffer Sam George was in the news battling his incumbent uh, E.T. Mensa for the NDC's parliamentary nomination in the Ningo Pram Pram constituency. He won that race, but he suffered some bruises from that battle and uh, he could take a while to heal. Sam George is with me now in the studio to discuss the way forward. Uh, regarding his parliamentary bid, but we also uh, remember there was some news about his suspension. Now, good evening and thank you very much for joining us, Sam. Good evening. So what's your status? Are you suspended? Have you been suspended or are you a parliamentary candidate for Ningo Pram Pram? For Let me party? say good evening to your viewers. I'm unaware of what you talk about. As far as I'm aware, I am the parliamentary candidate elect for the NDC in the Ningo Pram Pram constituency. And I'm not, I have not been communicated to that my status has changed. My status remains the same. So you never received any information from uh, the greater Accra chairman, uh, Ade Koka, who said on radio... I believe that that is inconsequential following the decision that was taken by the National Executive Committee last week, Monday. I'm looking forward. I'm not really talking about things in the past. But we are here to talk about things in the past. Now, um, you suffered some ordeal, some kind of ordeal during uh, your primaries. That's the primaries for Ningo Pram Pram. Are you enjoying the victory? Well, victory is transient and I'm looking up to my next challenge. Uh, I didn't intend to go into this race and have a walk in the park, park or anything of that sort. I went up against a colossus, an establishment, Honorable Iti Menza, as a political godfather in this country. Is an establishment on his own. Sorry tour. to bat him, but what did it take to beat him? You describe him as a colossus, a political grandfather. You are green. You're a new entrant, and you come in, and you, you're the David. You destroy the Goliath. What did it take? Fantastic analogy. It took a sling and five stones. Now, break down the <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure we're I not mean, I mean, the details of what, how the elections were conducted or how victory uh, came for me, again, really is not the, the crux of the matter for me now. I mean, that's past. My focus now is on the MPP candidate and not on... I'm not going to be uh, relishing or reveling in what has happened and, and gone when there's another battle ahead of me. There's a much bigger battle ahead of me and that's against Mr. Tete of the NPP. He accused you of engaging in some uh, dishonest activity, saying things against him and turning people's minds against him. Did that fuel your victory? I believe that he said those things in the heat of the election moment. I'll let it pass. What's your relationship like with him right now after your victory and his loss? For me, it's been the same way it's been all, as always. He's a senior political figure in my party. Did he call you to his congratulate one. you? Well, I, I think that everybody has his own style of handling electoral victory and defeat. And so, well, that is, again, not a major sticking point for me. But the most important thing for me is that he remains a huge figure in the party. But did you He's expect a founding him? Member of the party did you so. expect a congratulatory I expected nothing. message from him? I expected nothing. And how I went did you in, deal with I went nothing? In, I went in with no expectations. And so if you don't have any expectations, you can't be disappointed. And so the, nothing disappointed me. For me... Victory was won. 
the next target meant that that victory did not put me in parliament. It only gave me the mandate of my party. I need the mandate of the entire constituency to lead the, that constituency into parliament. It doesn't make me the, the, the member of parliament to be sworn in on the 7th of January 2017. There's another battle ahead of me which I have 11 months to prepare for. And so for me, I'm galvanizing the forces and putting together a strong team that is going to execute that mandate. And in my victory speech, I, I made the point clear. I have a target, 90% for His Excellency John Dramani Mahama and 80% for myself as a candidate. This battle is against the NPP's candidates. Do Absolutely. you have E.T. Mensah's support? Is he going to be part of this target that you have to win that seat for your party? I don't think he has any options, does he? He's a founding member of the party. Are you suggesting that he's going to campaign against the party? I'm asking you. I'll be interested. If, I, I don't expect to him say. to because... He's a founding member of the so party. So he's not giving you your, um, the support. He's just going to do I have not even launched my parliamentary, the main parliamentary campaign. We're doing the behind the scenes groundworks. And so I do Is not. He it's part not of time. the behind the scenes? It's my campaign. I would run my campaign. At the time when he, his role is required, at the time would when. Would you need we him? Need, absolutely. I made that point clear. He's been the MP there for 20 years. We will need his experience. We're going to be running on his record anyway. So We're have you reached to out to him? to do this hand in I, hand? I, I did that w immediately after the results were declared. Your reporters were there. I made the point clear that Team JM 2016 in Ingo Pram Pram is Sam George and, and Honorable E.T. Mentor. Well, I haven't been around to listen to it. Really? Yes. If he's going to support you, and you I have absolutely no him. doubt in my mind that he will support me, uh, except you have anything to the contrary to prove that Honorable E.T. Mentor is going to campaign for another political party in Ingo Pram Pram. And he's going to desert the NDC, a party that he is, that is a founding suspicion? member. I'm asking you because that, that, that suspicion appears to be foiling your line of questions. I'm not only asking you because, questions. And I've repeatedly given you the same answer that I believe he is going to play a role in the campaign when the time comes. But you didn't hear his response. So I'm only questioning that belief Well, you have. have you heard a response from him that suggests the contrary, something contrary to my belief? Last we spoke to him, he was still bitter about the loss and the time, things time, he said time, he did. Time, time heals wounds. Give him time. And we give you time? For me, I don't need the time. I've hit the ground running. I'm working. I have, I have a victory to deliver for my president and for my party. Now, some, some things, certain things happened to you during the primaries. Um, we may call them assault. You were assaulted during the primaries and you demanded an apology. Did that happen? Well, I, I mean, it was most unfortunate. I believe that the police is handling that matter because it happened right there in the police station. And so the police has to show that the laws of the land do work and that nobody is above the laws of the land. And so for me, I've left it in the hands of the police. I, who was I, behind that? E.T. Mensah? I have absolutely no idea. You should be asking the gentleman who carried out the assault. Very well. Now, one more thing on E.T. Mensah. He's demanded an apology from you on your conduct in the whole run-up and the primaries itself? Again, that is, that again is something which I have had and I asked myself what exactly it was I was apologizing for. However, irrespective of the lack of clarity in my mind as to what it was I was apologizing for, I went ahead and gave an apology on OKFM. So are you giving another apology here? Am I supposed to embark on an apology spree? You tell me. <laughs> One apology is sufficient. So that's a no. I have apologized for any acts that he may have deemed uh, injurious to his person. I mean, I'm not demanding an apology for the things that were said about me or my family because for me it's inconsequential. It, it doesn't take or add anything away from the victory that we chalked and the victory that we have to chalk ahead of us. Okay. For me, like I said, I don't think about the past. I, I, would, I would want to borrow the words of the greater Sajifo. I would look neither to the west or the east. In this case, I will look ni not, to my, not behind me. I'm going to look forward. There's a battle ahead of me, and that's what I'm focusing on. All and right. I believe that Honorable E.T. Mentor has a role to play. He will play that role. He is a member of the NDC. He will contribute to his quota. All right. We wish you the best of luck. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you very much. And that says Sam George. He is the NDC parliamentary uh, candidate for Ningo Pram Pram. He joined us in the studio. In a bit, Etonam say we'll bring you the latest in business. You want to stay for that? Time now for business with Etonam Say. Hello, good evening. How hey. are you? Hi, hi, hi. 
I, you've got a lot to talk about in yes, the business. Yes, yes, yes. We have the, the, the rating agency, Fitch, warning us about uh, our next year's intended 2016 euro bond that we want to issue. And also, Christmas is coming. Exactly. Shopping, something on shopping and then um, something on aviation. And so, when, when are we going shoe a, shopping? Uh, we need some new shoes. Okay, take it away. All right, now, the Ghana will pay very high interest if it goes ahead to issue another euro bond next year. That's the warning from rating agency Fitch. This follows the finance minister's confirmation of the country's plan to issue a $1.5 billion euro bond next year. Speaking from London director Fitch, Jean Frederick says their advice is not directed at only Ghana, but other countries in the sub region also planning to issue a sovereign bond in 2016. These countries do need to go to market. They're going to be facing a much higher yield than what they had been in the past. Uh, so how this will affect the sub-Saharan African countries will vary uh, from country to country. But all across the region, uh, governments are going to have to sort of balance, you know, the need to need to undertake pro-growth uh, economic policies with a constrained uh, revenue and constrained financing environment. Now, the country paid 10.75% as interest on the recent eurobond issued. However, with a recent marginal increase in interest rates in the U.S., there are also fears that government's cost of borrowing may go up in the coming weeks. Meanwhile, the finance minister said Tepe has indicated that proceeds from the upcoming eurobond will be used mainly for capital projects. The finance minister disclosed this in an interview with London-based research giant, the Oxford Group. George Yaffe has more. The disclosure for many confirms initial reports that indeed a government will go ahead and issue another eurobond next year. From the interview, it is also clear that government is open to raise some $1.5 billion instead of the initial report that it will issue $750 million. The finance minister in the interview with the Oxford Group also indicated that the World Bank will be providing up to $1 billion as guarantee for the proposed bond issue. Thus, he believes courts will assure the investment community that Ghana's sovereign debt is a secured investment, unquote. The minister argues that issuing another bond has become necessary because they want to use the funds raised to clear some short-term debt, pay off persons who bought into the sovereign bond that will mature in 2017. Mr. Tepe disclosed that government is working closely with the Bank of Ghana to improve dollar inflows for the country by managing our exports and imports more effectively. On revenue, the minister was of the view that the introduction Reduction of the tax identification number 10 will go a long way to improve tax collections, which will help boost revenue. Now, the Ghana Civil Aviation Authority says it would liberalize its markets beginning 2016 to make way for a larger market penetration. Speaking to Joy Business Director General of the Authority, Simon Aloti intimates the airport's runway will be extended to about 3,400 meters, among other projects, to make the aviation center more appealing to investors. Next year is a challenging year. We are looking at further separating the regulator, which is the GCA, from the air traffic services provider, that's the air navigation services provider, so that um, each entity will be independent of the other. We are looking at further liberalizing our markets so that we could get more flights to Accra and outside Ghana. You see that uh, we're improving the domestic airports. I just talked about installation of ILS at Tamale. The runway is being extended to about 3,400 meters, and you can take any type of aircraft, Boeing 747-800, A380. You can take any aircraft. And the airport company is correspondingly improving facilities. A new arrival hall will be opened by Dezema, a new Terminal 3, is, is being constructed. So there's a lot of opportunity for growth in Ghana's aviation industry. 
Now, let's talk about Christmas. There are suggestions the current challenging economic situation could already be affecting Christmas shopping and market activities. The case is not any different from shopping malls, the preferred destination for especially the middle and upper class during such festive season. Joy Business's Sheila Tamaklu takes a tour to the three major shopping malls in the capital and reports the operators are, however, earnestly preparing to cash in this Yuletide. Here's a report voiced by Jennifer Ikwamwa. The huge glazed doors and windows, high and luxury shops, and of course, the superstores, where you could get anything to buy from earthenware to sportswear. And there are hundreds of shoppers moving to and fro. This is the West Hills Mall. The shops here hope to sell more during this Christmas season, but the current economic crisis seems to be a threat. We realize that the depreciating CD uh, coupled with the uh, um, shortage of electricity you know, have actually impacted negatively on the disposable and discretionary uh, you know, uh, uh, income of, of every average Ghanaian. Not only you know, um, uh, private retailers, but an average Ghanaian, Ghanaian has been impacted you know, negatively by this crisis we have in the country. It has increased overhead, overhead costs because we tend to run more on generator and then that is more expensive than to run on ECG. The situation is no different at the Achimota and Accra malls, although they tell me sales are picking up. We've suffered quite um, a huge economic turmoil um, within this year, which has really affected all of us, somewhat directly, somewhat indirectly. And of course, um, shopping centers like Accra Mall, we have also had our fair share of this economic turmoil. People with the purchasing power aren't really purchasing. People are holding on to their money and people are buying when they really need to buy. Yeah, and well, with um, statistics, it shows that, um, you know, people aren't buying like um, the years before. Uh, people expect that with the current uh, economic challenges and power issues in the country, uh, patronage will fall. But to the opposite, we are in expecting a large number of people because even uh, during the weekdays the place is full people are excited to be here they are doing a lot of uh, sales going on and the tenants are also happy so generally it's good retailers at these malls are also optimistic about increased sales and we have a package for um, those who are going to buy a lot even if you come around it's still a gift for each and every one of them. So you should try come visit us. For the competition, we have our customers already, so we know how to get to them. So we are fine. When the dollar goes high, if it goes high, that means we have to increase our, our stuff. But when it goes low, we need to reduce it. So it has really affected us. But the hopes of these retailers may not be misplaced as customers prepare to take advantage of all the sales promotions on offer. We are running a promo of TV sets fridges, microwaves, mobile phones, and what have you, all kind of electrical gadgets. Uh, there, is, there is hardship, but it's just that I manage, I advise myself to save towards something. Well, as it has been over the years, Christmas comes with a lot of shopping, and it appears this won't change irrespective of economic challenges. Away from Christmas, let's see how the market fed this week. And today is Friday, and John is here to take us through that. I saw, I'm seeing that only two equities moved to the market. Exactly. So uh, we are looking at uh, Alloex and uh, Intravenous here. You know, if you had actually invested in the market today, fortunately, you would, uh, you, you'll be walking home with uh, a peso each. And when I say a peso per share, you know what it means? So you, let's say if you have say, a million shares, so a million Ghana cities invested in, invested in there, mm. you'll be walking home close to almost about, with about 10,000 Ghana cities. That's a lot. That's, that's a lot of money. A lot of money. So basically, what we're saying is that it's not always doom and I mean always doom. People are making mon money on the market. Others aren't doing so at the same time. So basically, that's what we're talking about. But there's one thing. Today, the market has showed some resilience against all odds by recording almost around um, 7,754,000 trade shares trading on the market. Which is good. At a, at a total value of about 1.5 million. That's quite significant on a Friday like oh, this right. one. Because usually Fridays don't record the high numbers. How's and the commodity market doing? Commodities, um, we are not seeing anything different. 
going forward. But, uh, but of course, uh, Coco didn't move that much. Um, Coco did not really uh, move that much. It lost almost about uh, $1 one dollar to one close dollar. at, let me look at the figure, yes, to close at $3,252. Per metric ton, gold actually added fourteen dollars to its value. It's actually up and down, you know. But there's one thing which makes me a bit um, that make me fear for for the price of gold going forward because right. gold has been an alternative investment for those who don't think that American dollar would actually um, gain value over the period of time. But now that the Fed has actually increased. We are going to see yeah, the impact. Their rate by right. almost about 25 basis points. A see, lot let's of see, investment is going to actually go into the dollar, mo mo mostly. So we're going to see gold right. further dip, dip into it. I Which mean, re re record lows. But is there, gold is CD? keeps going All right. down right. almost over the period. The CD today, fortunately, it's again, has maintained for the past three days. On the currency market. It's, it's been, I think, from Monday to today. Monday, it's okay. actually maintained its momentum by gaining against the US dollar, the British pound, the euro, Go and CD. then the Chinese yuan. That I, li I, li I, li I, li I like that one. So on a Friday <laughs> like this, I think it's a good news. To it's be a good to. news. I mean, it's good, very happy. good, very good news I'm happy, to be given John. to some of our business. So I think that's so far so good. All right. Thank good. you, so John. Thank you, market. John. Yeah. So you have a fair idea how the market was this week. My name is Eton Amse, and that's how we wrap up with business. <laughs>
to give us a document which he was disclosing to us mm -hmm. openly in, in, in a session. And we didn't see any reason why he couldn't give us a copy, but he refused to do it mm -hmm. and said that if we wanted it, we could get it from the, in the public domain. So first level, you met Prime Minister, gave you explanations, you're not too satisfied with all of them. Mm -hmm. Why are you heading with us? Well, we will do our follow-ups. We have to follow up. We need to talk to VRA. We need to talk to the PURC. We also need to talk to the Bank of Ghana. And um, if possible, we would like to talk to Ibrahim uh, Mahama as well mm -hmm. and ask him specifically uh, what the terms and, co and conditions of his contract was. Because if you go into the use of petroleum revenue management funds for 2015, a report that was produced to Parliament, and you look on page 34, in there you will see the procurement works for the civil works, the very same contract that Ibrahim Mahama was awarded to do. Mm. And that contract is specifically noted that it has been paid for and done, and the cost of it was about 15 million Over in 15 subsidies. Million, yes. And it's there. Yeah. So the next question we want to ask is, how come that this has been paid for in the petroleum funds already, and why is it being done twice? So we have a potential opportunity there to interrogate this issue further. Okay. The whole financial issue around this is a bit murky. However, uh, what are we going to do next? Well, we are still on a fact-finding mission. Several issues are coming up surrounding the whole Ameri company itself, its existence, how it came into being, whether it was just a convenient vehicle set up mm. to execute this project and what we are going to do. But I'll tell you a funny thing. Um, we got to a point when we raised the issue and used the term Dumso. Aha, that question about as part it, of it. Yeah. And the minister flipped. He was so angry, saying, Why are we bringing vernacular into a meeting at the, at, at the ministry? You don't say. And we couldn't figure out what it was. And at that point, he threatened that if we continue to use the word Dumso, then he would call the meeting to an end. And just that ending of it, he talking about the uh, little controversy over the word doom. So you heard earlier in that clip, that telephone interview uh, earlier done by Francis Aban. Well, on that doom, so note, we'd like to take a short break. We'll be back on Joy News Prime. Don't go away. Hello again. Now let's find out uh, what people are saying on social media. And that's Joy News Interactive. Aisha Ibrahim is here to give us a sneak peek. Aisha? Hello, Franca. It's amazing, and I can say it's amazing Friday because yeah. a lot of interest. Looking good. Are looking good, so <laughs> Franca, you see. So uh, things got heated, and a few punches were thrown at the Accra Metropolitan Assembly after a discussion over sitting allowances degenerated. <laughs> Also, a senior ranking member on the Mines and Energy Committee of Parliament, Katie Hammond, says the committee was misled to approve the controversial Ameri Power Project. Now, so join us within the R on the interactive segment on Joy News Prime as I take all your comments on Facebook, Twitter, and WhatsApp. I'll be back before you know. Indeed, I shall will be back, but you're watching Joy News Prime. Stay with us for more. And you're still watching Joy News Prime. Let's take another look at our headlines. Accra Human Rights Court throws out suits by suspended national chairman of the New Patriotic Party, seeking to stop the party's extraordinary delegate congress in Sunyani on Saturday from discussing matters relating to his suspension. Pressure group Occupy Ghana frustrated by the power minister's reluctance to provide further and better particulars on controversial Ameri Energy Agreement. In business, rating agency Fitch warns Ghana may have to pay higher interest rates on its planned 2016 Eurobond.
Thanks for staying. The news continues. Chief of Staff Julius Debra has directed the Attorney General to review the contract and the associated payments in the spraying and branding of 116 new intra-city buses. A letter dated December 17, 2015 to the Attorney General Marietta Brew at Pierre Pont has asked that a probe be conducted into the controversial deal and findings communicated by close of day December 21, 2015. Now it's emerged this week that about 3.6 million Ghana cities of oil funds have been spent on rebranding Metro Mass Rapid Transit buses, generating a huge controversy in Parliament. The minority says their location is unacceptable and wasteful. Meanwhile, the company that branded the buses says the figures quoted in government's documents as cost of branding is outrageous. According to Kweku Mensa Abeku, as manager of Crystal Concept, his company charged 11,600 CDs as labor for the branding of all 116 buses. He spoke on uh, our sister Joy FM's Super Morning Show. There wasn't any formal relationship between us. You were, you were called upon by a friend who introduced us to um, um, somebody from Smarty that we can, we can do the better job for them. So they asked us to go and do a sample test and for them to see. So we did a sample and they, they appreciated it and they said that we should go ahead and do the job. That's all that we came to contact with, 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 with them. So in the end, who branded the buses? So we did brand the buses. We didn't do the spraying. But you did the branding? Yes. We did the labor. How much and was uh, the labor cost for each bus? Uh, for us, we charged them 100 Ghana per bus. On the invoice, labor cost for stickers is 2,000 Ghana cities. But you are saying that it cost them 100 Ghana cities to do it. That is, that is our problem. You see, when the family members call, you know what, after the doing of this bus, uh, we, we told friends and family, Charlie, you did this bus. It, it, for you to, for them to know, Charlie, what's why you did You've done something. So when the friends and family who know that we need branded the bus, they've been calling since about two, three days. They've been calling. They've been disturbing. Hey, you've got some money. You've got some money. And if you tell them that you charge them 100 Ghana, they don't believe it. We charge them only 100. So we are, we are saying that we didn't charge 2,000 for people to say that uh, we, we, we have aided or we have helped or we have done something wrong or whatever. How were you paid? Could you... As I am talking to you now, we have, we have money with them that they have to pay us. Environment Minister Mahama Yaga is warning plastic producers they risk a withdrawal of their production licenses if they flout the ban on non-biodegradable plastics. The minister has been on a tour of plastic, some plastic producing companies in Accra to check compliance. Joseph Opoku Gakpo has the rest of the story. In July this year, the Environment Minister issued a directive asking all plastic producers, particularly those producing light plastics, to introduce biodegradable materials into their items so that then they will degrade within a short period of time. Well, in November this year, that ban on non-biodegradable products took effect and the Environment Minister has been on a tour of some plastic producing companies to check upon whether the companies are complying with the directive. Factories are big, as you can see, and so we have to keep making surprise visits to them. And then um, the next stage is to also go to the market, get the products, and develop the competence to test and see whether the product has uh, oxo biodegradable additive in them. Um, so. Enforcement will require a lot of action. Uh, everybody, the district environmental, I mean the regional environmental officers going around the regions where there are factories and ensuring that they are actually using it. Biodegradable products are ordinary plastics to which degradable raw materials have been added. They decompose naturally within six to eight months after use. The, the, the measures that the EPA will normally do is to withdraw your your permit to operate, which is punitive enough because shutting down an operation like this for even a day costs a lot of money. I'm sure he will tell you that. So that is, that is enough. Just withdrawing your permit and having you not operate for a day will cost you so much. And for businesses, that is the most punitive measure you can, you can think of. General Manager of Poly Products, Anub Mita, says initial teething problems with getting access to the raw materials have been dealt with.
but managing director of Quali Plus Limited, First Arkel, is advising government to consider other alternatives in dealing with the country's sanitation problems. I don't see that uh, biodegradable is a product that will work, not for now, not for the long uh, term, because it will take a very long time for the biodegradable to prove its efficiency. Uh, we've seen that in developed countries like USA and Canada, and it has not proved uh, to be working uh, properly. For Joy News, Joseph Opokugakbo, Accra. Parents in the Koforidia Zongo in the eastern region are threatening to withdraw their awards from a school in a community over plans by the National Security Agency to erect a communication mast in that neighborhood. They fear the mast poses a health risk. Here's a report from correspondent Haruna Yusif Wumpuni. Parents of peoples in Madhadin Islamic Primary School are worried that having a communication mast around the school will pose a serious health threat to vulnerable children. They tell Joy News that if the mast is erected, they will have to withdraw their children from the school. However, they say this will be very unfortunate since education is the only way that children have hoped for a better future. School, no. The school is important, but we are not in support of the mast. If the Zongo leaders will allow the mast to be erected, then we will withdraw our children from the school. The mast will only cause us all sorts of illnesses. If the authorities will not act against the erection of the mast, then we will not take part in the 2016 elections and we will withdraw our children from the school and render the teachers jobless. Meanwhile, the authorities of Madhadin Islamic Primary School appeal to parents in the community to be patient and keep their children enrolled since it is the only school in the community. According to the school, a mass withdrawal means the school would have to shut down since it is already struggling with enrollment. How will you see from police report from the Eastern Region? City Hall in Accra was turned into a boxing arena as some members of the Accra Metropolitan Assembly exchanged blows in an argument over their setting allowances. This was during the setting of the Assembly to elect a new presiding member. One member had tried to push for a discussion of their unpaid allowances before the vote. And here are the scenes that ensued. Well, it looks like a good time to take a break, but there's lots more coming up regarding this on Joy News Interactive. Stay with us. Entertainment News is brought to you. Hello again. Time now for Entertainment News with the gorgeous, as always, Miss Jean. Hello, Franca. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm curious about the shawl, or uh, I don't know what to call it you have on. Okay, whilst you're thinking about this, I'm thinking about your skirt. It's so beautiful, lovely, and um, I, wish yeah, I, wear, I, I wish I could wear I wish I could fit into it, you know. Eh? Diversionary tactics. You know, like they say, everybody life. <laughs> okay, what's coming up? What's coming up? There's a lot coming up in entertainment, but you know, yesterday Google released a list of um, the most searched for celebrators, you know, on uh, in 20, 2015. 2015. Also, it released uh, the list of the most searched for Ghanaian song and musicians in 2015. So we put together the list of all these people for those who do not know these musicians. And you know, Israel's favorite song. You know his favorite song? No, I don't. Mansa. Mansa. The one he did the Kung Fu dance with. Oh, oh, oh. How could I forget? Aha. Uh -huh. Place that on the list. Let's see Oh, it. wow. 
All right, so those are the most searched musicians and their songs, you know, for 2015. Uh, I don't know if you were expecting any song you didn't see. I was expecting to see some other songs in. Like which one? Like which one? You want to know? <laughs> you want to know? But I'm, 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 I'm glad that, you know, once again, Mansa made Mansa, it in there. Mansa, Mansa, no. it's, it's like the most popular song. It's the most popular now. song of the, 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 the year. Yeah. Kung Fu, Kung Fu. Hiya. <laughs> it's the most like. popular dance. You know, I think we have to find time and, you know, give him some dance I think lessons. I agree with you when you say yeah. he dances like a robot, you know, like... Now you get it. Let's find time and, you know, give him a few... Israel, come for dance lessons, please. <laughs> okay. So, okay, now let's talk about um, Teddy of yes, OCBS's Teddy birthday. birthday. Yes, his birthday came off yesterday at the Plus 233 Jazz Bar. And, you know, he turned 80. And he's been talking, you know. He had some people, great personalities, grace the occasion. We saw Rocky Dawuni there. We saw uh, he presented with... a citation from the Ghana uh, Music um, Ghana uh, Musicians Union of Ghana and so we bring you excerpts of what happened there It's been a wonderful night, you know. I, you know, I will tell, I'll, I'll tell the whole world, especially England, that what what happened here tonight should be happening everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Thank you all so much. Birthday to Happy Teddy birthday Yose. to Teddy Jose, and then we wish him years. yes, we wish him some more years, you know. And um, let's talk about Joy FM. Joy FM has been awarded by the tourist board as the the most visited, I think, the tourist site of the year. You know, the event took place at the. Um, it's been awarded to tourists. Tourism Oriented Media Radio of the Year 2015. The award was presented to the station by the Ghana Tourism Authority at the 11th National Tourism Award Program held at the Banquet Hall. And Doreen Ando of Cosmopolitan Mix was there to pick up the award for the station. Yes, so that's a great one for us here. It's a mm. mouthful. Tourism Oriented Radio. But it means we are doing a lot in yes, tourism. Yes, yes, okay. yes, yes, yes. Okay, yes, yes, okay. Yes. Yes. Right. Now let's talk about skinny models. Yes, apparently in France they've been told that if you're this skinny, okay, you're not even skinny. Yeah, I've become fat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you need to check to see if you're fit enough to, you know, to be a model. Maybe they're looking for plus size models, you know. So maybe I could fit in there. I wish I was from France, you know, I just go there. And then they're looking for you. Uh, I don't know. The <laughs> government says that you need to actually go through some checks to be sure for them to be sure that you're fit enough to stand or compete as a model there Not too slim yeah yeah and i take you all the way to gabon and uh you know a comedian mounts the stage and he decides to you know get the people to laugh guess what he did he calls of one lady who is almost who, who is almost naked and he decides to demonstrate on stage something what? He's talking about sex on stage, so he decides to call the woman from the Practical. audience, exactly, <laughs> and then he decides to you know, have a good time with her. Really? Yes. yes. He did it on stage? Yes. yes, he did. Oh my goodness. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. No comment. All right. So, Ghanaian actor who also was the president of the Actors Guild passed on some months ago. He'll be laid to rest tomorrow, and then... Uh, all the entertainers will be there and we'll bring you yeah. SFs from there. And happening now or later in this evening is Girl Stock as well. And so we'll bring you SFs from those shows, you know, on Monday. 
You'll and be there? Yes, I'll be there at the girl's talk. That's um, a fierce get girl's talk. I always get it mixed with Becca, but it, now I think the first fierce, one was Becca. And yes, this time now it's a fierce FF. girl talk. And also, we'll be laying our own former colleague, Chrissy Hazel, to rest tomorrow. So, yes. we'll bring you all those excerpts by Monday. Okay, yeah. and that's it for Show. Sure. 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 Thank you very sure. much, Miss G. Entertainment News. For watching Joy News Prime is now time for sports, and Gary Al Smith is in the studio. Uh, I know you have on the list CK James Fee is passing. Also, lots more about the English Premier League. League, yes, both. But we start with CK James Fee. He had a state burial. Um, the beginnings of a state burial today at the State House. And it was a very classy and solemn event. May his soul rest in peace. Do you know what he did for Ghana? I don't know, but you're going to tell me about that. Good. Thanks for joining us on the spot on Prime. Hello, I'm Gary Al Smith. And as we've been speaking about all day, Charles Kumi Jemfi starts going home today with a ceremony at the banquet hall of the State House. The man who died at the age of 85 this past September won trophies for Ghana especially on the African continent. He is credited with being the single most important influence for the country. And Kwabna Yeboa, the veteran journalist, and Joe Agri, former deputy minister of sport, and himself a veteran in the journalism profession, paid their last respects at the ceremony today. Uh, you know, I smile because I celebrate the man. I don't mourn the man. Uh, Dead, as we know, is an inevitability, but it's a question of how you lived your life, whether you lived a full life. And for CK, I personally and sincerely believe that he lived a full life. I mean, a man who committed himself to the national cause and played for the nation with all commitment and dedication. And more importantly, as I keep stressing, those were the days footballers did not demand what the nation could do for them, but more importantly, what they could do for the nation. And CK Jamfi had a wonderful relationship with the then president of Sajifu, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. And CK believed in the African personality, shared the vision and the dream of the president of the land. So the president, sharing in that dream, decided to fly CK Jamfi to Europe to go and embark on a coaching course to come back and handle the national team in 63, 65, and in 1982 as the manager of the side in Libya, won the cup for the third time. So this is a man who really dedicated himself to this nation, but more importantly, had self-belief and confidence. And I keep making the point that if say Kate Damfi, together with Osage, if in those they believe that the African was capable of taking his destiny in his own hands and to handle his national team personally, I feel that is most embarrassing and a big disgrace that several decades down the line, we have to go to Europe and go and bring foreign guys to come and handle the national team. We must take inspiration from what CK Jamfi did in those days, have self-belief, have confidence in ourselves, and have the understanding that the African is very capable of taking his destiny in his hands. I knew CK Jamfi as a footballer, great, great, great footballer, and uh, sometimes when some of us see what is being written and said about footballers of today, we say, ah, are we talking about the same things? Because what CK and his generation did, I don't think we, we, have, we were ever going to see that kind of thing again. May he rest in peace. Going over to England in the Barclays Premier League this weekend, there's one topic that looms large over the entire league. It's the sacking of Jose Mourinho. Yesterday, in our extensive analysis right here, we ended with a vote that was going on my on myjoyonline.com. And yesterday, I think it read 75% or so to 25%. But have Chelsea made the right decision in sacking Jose Mourinho? At the moment, it's looking like 65% say no. 35% say yes. Now, Chelsea is supporting, uh, Chelsea's support, really, as you can see, are angry at the players for their poor performance rather than putting the blame squarely at the doorstep of the Portuguese managing superstar. Football, let's go to boxing. It's been an interesting year for boxing around the world and also in Ghana. This 
next few weeks we are going to have plenty of boxing action so look out for the listings of where you can go and watch especially if you're in Accra or Kumasi Joshua Clote is ready for Gabi Rosad um, which will be on December 19th preparation was done here we just left last week Wednesday of all the preparation okay. was done the next here. one is Duke Micah the picture I sent you so, mm. it's prepared very very well, well and I can say about between 80 to 90 percent before he left so it's all right we're talking there almost every day almost every day we've been talking we've been strategizing on how to go about the doubt he was already for him i don't know whether you know him though but when it comes to the situation and training he's very very disciplined even more than the young one monday, that's the man they call Aloe, um the manager for joshua clotty giving us details of that fight on december the 19th but a week later you know bukum banku and aite powers will be fighting on the 26th in Kumasi, on that same day, they will be fight. There will be fights in Accra. Um, there'll be an interesting fight night here in the capital that will be organized by the Street Wise Promotions in collaboration with Error Hawk and Good Time Promotions. And on that day, they will have a seven bout boxing thriller at the Accra Sports Stadium. And the night is dubbed Time to Prove Yourself. And to see former members of the national boxing team the black bombers uh, in action. Now, the two boxers will be expecting to give us fireworks are Duke Micah and Ecole Wilson. They'll be slagging it out for the WBO Africa Bantamweight title. Now, Duke Micah is a name that you may have heard it before. Um, he was in our studios today, but you may have heard of him because he was one of Ghana's best representatives at the London 2012 Olympic Games. He's 24 years now and he's gone professional. With this title, with this title, I'm going to hand off. I'm going to hand somewhere at the rankings in the world mm -hmm. because I want to face all the boxers there who are be the best boxers out there. You know, everybody who is ready to fight me, I'm ready to fight you because I want to be in the world, not in Ghana. So unless we finish fighting, so I need everybody to come and watch good show. Because you are coming there to perform. Mm. I was born to be a winner, so I was a winner. Even you can see every time I'm laughing. Mm. So because of, I always know that I'm a winner. No boxer can beat me. I'm ready to face everybody who is in bantamweight. You understand? Because boxing is what I do. I don't do any job. Boxing is my life. So whoever is ready to face me, I'm ready to face the person. You understand? So, uh, that's Duke Micah giving us a bit of braggadocio there. But, hey, thank you very much for joining us on the spot for tonight. It's the last of the week. You can get more updates on CK Jamfee's final funeral, right? We have pictures, exclusives on myjoyonline.com forward slash sports. And throughout this weekend, follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and all our social media platforms. My name is Gary Al Smith. It's a wrap. Aisha Ibrahim returns with what's happening on Joy News Interactive. Aisha? Indeed, I told you it's a fantastic Friday. Yes, because we have a lot on our line now. So it's time to get in your comments now. Before I tell you where you can send your messages, please remember that the interactive segment on Joy News Prime is brought to you by Airtel, the smartphone network. Airtel wants you to enjoy more talk, longer tests, and all the internet browsing with its too much packs by dialing star 202 hash now you can get as we are on facebook.com slash joy news on tv is the same name for twitter and our whatsapp number zero five six zero eight hundred thousand All right, so controversy surrounding the Ameri Power Project contracts doesn't look like it's dying out soon. Katie Hammond uh, on the uh, Energy and Mines Committee of Parliament is accusing the Power Ministry of misleading the committee. He says that they weren't provided with the full details of the transaction. The story has received a lot of attention on social media. Let's go check out some of your comments. Franca, what do we have? So on, on Katie Hammond.
Hammond, what he's been saying about the Ameri deal. Interesting, Aisha, when we listened to the audio, we had him second, you know, the bill that was brought to Parliament before it was passed. But interesting comments coming up. Larry Yao Apedo says, no wonder Mahama said you were lazing around in Parliament. You people are just <laughs> good at making noise when meaningful things about the nation uh, both sides will be making unnecessary noise. We're just wasting the poor taxpayers' money on UMPs. Nana Asiedu says, so Katie, what were you doing in Parliament when it was brought before you? Sleeping, right? <laughs> <laughs> As Saduko Roy says, UMPs should continue sleeping in Parliament. Most of the MPs are not contributing to the development of our nation at all. They rather fight against policies that will bring development to our motherland for political gains. God is watching. Inusa Abdul Rahman says it is only members of the NDC that constitutes the Parliamentary Select Committee on Energy and Power. He's asking, if not, then the opposition is a joke. There's no need in scoring cheap political points when they know the truth but won't tell we the electorate. I guess they've really been sleeping in Parliament. So everybody's saying Parliament has been sleeping. Orlando Abubakar says, were you not in Parliament when the bill was agreed on? Uh, oh, that is why the President said you guys are sleeping in Parliament. <laughs> ben Koroma says, why do we lie on each other? Bad politics in Ghana, sleeping in Parliament. Swabi Mustafa says, misled by your sleeps, <laughs> talking, <laughs> talking our money, uh, taking our money at every month and sleeping in Parliament is it's corruption, corruption too. too. <laughs> <laughs> in a WhatsApp, you won't believe what's coming on WhatsApp. Katie Hammond should give us a break. Where is the drill ship cash? That is from A.A. A. Adams. This one says, um, simple due diligence uh, is needed. And so they should give us a break in Parliament. And this one, he says that um, we would have saved the country over $200 million for the deal. When we say the president and his appointees are incompetent, people cry foul. They are doing all means to ensure they win the election in 2016 before they show us more incompetence. What we are seeing now is just the tip of the iceberg. It's from Maxi from Bimbila. And this one says, um, <laughs> someone says, please read mine. Oh, um, okay, let me see what you posted. Then I can read. It says, um, well, he's talking about the NPP. I'll read yours when we when we get there and he says uh, this this is the same phone and whatsapp number ruler and then, oh my goodness okay I'll, I'll look at that later and I'll look at what you're trying to say but a lot of the comments coming in uh, are not happy he says Mahama be chop chop and plus ministers from his this from Matthew from South Quanta and this one says please could you send me a royal highness dancing video okay we'll do that later mm -hmm. a lot of the comments coming in let's do more on uh, join us interactive the new patriotic party is holding an extraordinary delegates congress in sunyai in the bonahafu region despite claims by the sunyai traditional council of not being aware now the party will be hoping to put a difficult year behind them and forge forward to commission its campaign team for the 2016 general elections here are your views from the streets <music> They should know how to compromise things and be patient. And they should know that power is our last one hour time. Like that's God who gives power. So if the power is not yours, just follow the way. If it's yours, Allah will give it to you. If it's not yours, then Allah will give it to the one who is supposed to be given. So it's not a matter of grievances and worries. So I like, wish them good luck for whatever they are going to do. We want peace in the party. So just want to wish them all the best. Uh, they should try and make sure that uh, everything goes on well. I love MPP very much. I believe in their ideologies and their manifestos. And um, Nana Kufado is my mentor. I wish them very well. I wish them that 2016 they'll come back to power and solve the Dumsor issue. It's really affecting us. I love MPP very much. I believe in their ideologies and their manifestos. And um, Nana Kufado is my mentor. I wish them very well. I wish them that 2016 they'll come back to power and solve the Dumsor issue. It's really affecting us. <laughs> 
of comments are coming on our social media platforms on Facebook. Francisca, what is there? So the post is here. We have not decided to stop MPP's conference, but that's coming from the Sunyani Traditional Council. Mohammed Astro Damongo says, as a matter of fact, the NPP's Congress is just an inflammable decision to add more flames to their party. This irregularities in, uh, the irregularities in the MPP is clearly telling Ghanaians the kind of governance they would be putting in place if they mistakenly win power. Kwame Francis, AJ, says Mohammed. Okay, he's responding to Mohammed Ashto. Uh, he says, are you in Ghana and do you see the corruption? Excuse me to say our Gunja man, JM, is superintendent in Ghana. Um, Daniel Enim of Fosuhene says, Nananum should tell us which youth are saying they will not allow the NPP conference to take place. Is it not the NDC foot soldiers? They, are, they have rented to do this. So already people are throwing accusations uh, at the NDC, Abuaji Simon says, I pray that it all comes to an end in peace tomorrow. Imoro Dawuni says, Inshallah, the mighty God is there, not even the devil. Okay. Muhammad uh, Jamal says, the conference can't be stopped by anybody except Allah. Now, Toma Mahamudu says, tomorrow the big elephant will walk into the city. And Shif Manosai says, this quarantine is confused and should not be taken seriously. Uh, <laughs> Yao Abuaji says, all this nonsense will one day stop. And uh, for Zia Mohammed Awal says, we all know the party which Joy News belongs to. Joy News belongs to a party? No, no way. <laughs> okay, no that's interesting. <laughs> um, Christian Ayim says, stop them, I can party led. Okay, that seems like a very tribalistic comments there. Well, Joseph Echo says all the best to the NPP. Aisha? And Adams from Tamale says uh, the NPP uh, doesn't recognize traditional authority. Oh my God. This one says uh, the NPP will settle soon by the grace of God from Matthew. And this one says uh, stop the fighting and let's peace prevail in the party as if there is no leader in the country this is from epaphras mensa a lot of the comments this one says uh, okay he's talking about the uh, parliament deal this one uh, also say i love your simple twelve. i think she's talking about me and this one says um we wish the NPP a happy Congress tomorrow and pray that they wipe our tears come 2016. Let's go for a break. There is more on GNI.